What's going on, gang? Welcome back again. You know Christmas is right around the corner. It's coming up quick, and you're not going to have much time after you see this video to buy gifts. I'm going to try my best to get it through Patreon and on YouTube before Christmas. We're going to talk about uh, about approximately 20 things every guitar player should have. Stay tuned. What say, YouTubers? What say? Welcome back again. Thank you for coming back. Uh, this video is, is going to talk about not everything that a guitar player necessarily has to have, but if you're a guitar player or you know a guitar player or your spouse is a guitar player, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of options, things that you can, uh, maybe they don't already have that you can go out and get for them and uh, as a Christmas gift. There's a big hair there. Uh, it's a Christmas gift. Uh, you know, you're going to see this video though. You'll, when you, by the time this airs on YouTube, you're going to have only like a couple days, probably max, maybe three, if I can hurry and get it running through the. See, my videos go up on Patreon. What you're seeing on on YouTube, all the videos on YouTube usually are one week to one month old. It was made one week to a month ago. When you're seeing it on YouTube. Uh, this video here, I'm going to push it a little bit and try to get it through. Now, it'll give you more shopping time. <laughs> but uh, guitar players, what do they need, man? Why do they not have... Like I say, you don't necessarily need these... i got about 20 things here. You don't necessarily need them all. But it'd be nice to have every one of them if you can. Or if you know somebody that doesn't have any of this shit, then uh, get it for them. <laughs> all right, let's get on with it, man. Thank you all for coming. I love meeting up here with you guys and doing the horrendous, horrible exotic things that we do <laughs> all right you should have either a guitar stand uh hey i've got a couple over there you know what i mean a guitar stand sits on the floor you set your guitar in it like whoever's playing if you know somebody plays a guitar and they don't have one they would love that man take your guitar off put it in the stand you know instead of putting it back in the case i leave mine in the stand nearly all the time which is where i'm playing that way when i see it i want to play it and whereas if it's in the case it's a little more effort, you know. I have to want to play a little bit more to get it out. Uh, or a wall hanger. You, you can get good wall hangers, and it doesn't hurt your instrument as long as uh, the wall hanger fits the, uh, I was about to say peg head. <laughs> I know you guys love that word. The st stock head. <laughs> head stock. I'll get it in a minute. As long as the wall hanger fits, you know, you don't want to hang hang it in the wall on the keys, you know what I mean? You don't want it hanging from the keys. You want it to fit inside on the wood. And uh, usually if you get a good one, they, they all fit. Another thing that's a must if you're a guitar player is a capo. Everyone that plays guitar should have a capo. Now I recommend, I got a video up on them, you should search the channel and watch that video because there's some capos you do not want. Uh, you should be able to adjust, get capo that you can adjust how much tension down on those strings that it puts. If you get one you can't adjust that, you get these with a the big spring in them, you just clamp them on there. They squeeze the string down in between the frets, the strings go sharp and you got to retune, you know, all the time. You should, uh, if you know a guitar player, or R1, for acoustic guitars especially, but this is for electrics too, a humidifier. Everyone ought to have a guitar humidifier. Some way to liquidize, liquefy their box, <laughs> if you're with me on that. You should keep two towels around. Uh, I like these right here, these kind of towels. And I've got a whole boatload of them, man. There's a bunch of them just laying right there. I don't know what they're made of. I have no idea. I'll hold them up very close so you can see. But they're really nice. And the reason I say two of them, you notice I got two right there handy. Uh, the reason I say two of them is you need one to wipe your strings off with when you get done playing and you need a separate one from that to wipe your guitar down with. You don't want just one ride and you wipe your guitar down. You ought to wipe your guitar down every time you're finished playing it. Wash your hands every time before you play it and keep two rags, two cloths. Every guitar player needs a tuner, some sort of tuner. You know, it could be a pitchfork if that's what they like, but some kind of an electronic tuner. You know, I've got them all over the place here. I won't be able to find any. There's a little cheap snark tuner. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him, but they're all fairly accurate. You know, I like the ones in the uh, Android apps. They are extremely accurate. Two of them that I know of are. Uh, I think I got a video on that even too. I got videos on everything, man. 
if it's an acoustic guitar and you don't have a pickup in it. A pickup's a nice addition for a, a guitar player that plays acoustic guitar. I've got a Fishman Ellipse in one of my Martin guitars. I'm going to demo that. i got one video up on it, but it's a shitty video. It's just crappy. I didn't really demo the thing like I should. I, it was more me playing the guitar for 40 minutes than it was demo. I'm going to make a, a demo on that Fishman Ellipse system. It's the best, the absolute best. It's expensive, <laughs> but uh, it's it's perfect, man. It produces the true sound of your acoustic guitar, a pickup. All right, every guitar player ought to have some kind of polish. Now, I use Susanna. Thank you for this. This is like my fourth bottle of this stuff, man. It's called Smith Pro Formula Polish, and that's what it looks like. And this bottle's half gone. I've not had any uh, chemical reactions or anything with... I've used that on all different kinds of finishes under the sun, man. And it's never chemically reacted or caused any problems, and it will put a... Wow, it'll make your guitar shiny. I don't know if you'd want to use that on satin finishes or not. Uh, some basic tools, you know, just like uh, some little tiny screwdrivers, you know, like set, so. Or a little pack of files. You can buy these little cheap files. You know, you might have to file your nut slot out a little bit or uh, the end of a fret or, you know, just basic tools, man. Even a uh, hell of crescent wrench, pliers, needle nose pliers. I use them all the time. Wire cutters. That, that's on the list here somewhere. If you're playing usually an acoustic guitar, you're going to need a strap button. They hardly ever come with a strap button all the way back here in the back lower belt, the bottom. Almost always. Or, no, they do have one there. It's up here on the neck. They almost never have one on the neck. Uh, if you buy a guitar, always make sure whoever, if you're getting it from a store, make them put a strap button on it. Make them do it. If they screw it up, then uh, you get a big discount <laughs> and you'll have a strap button. Everybody ought to have a strap button. Everybody ought to have picks. Now here's another thing that covers more than one thing. There's about 20 here all together. I got picks marked as 10. Everybody needs a flat pick. Find out how thick they like or how thin they like. And if they finger pick, they might want to try a finger pick sometime. You can get, I, I recommend, because I played banjo a very long time, plastic or what, what is it, uh, celluloid or what is the word I'm looking for there. Anyways, it's a plastic type thumb pick and two metal finger picks is what I recommend. National, if you can find finger pick, national finger picks, that's what I would recommend you get if you're buying for somebody else or even if you're buying for yourself. Okay. Everybody needs a strap, man. I mean, you know, you don't want to, probably don't want to sit down and play your guitar all the time. I remember when I was a kid, my dad putting a strap on his banjo. He loved that strap, man. He had, I still got the old Gibson banjo he had, RB250, 56 model it is. I'll maybe show you that someday. So when I learned to play on, started on when I was four years old. Anyways, he got a strap for it. And he loved the banjo and the strap so much he put it on the stand for hours in front of the dresser mirror, man, looking at himself while he picked. <laughs> but everybody, every guitar player needs some kind of strap. You're going to also need, I thought that said elixir strings, but it says extra strings. Can't even read my own writing. Buy somebody a set of strings. Find out what gauge they like. Electric guitar or acoustic guitar. Uh, arch top guitar. Doesn't matter. You know, find out what gauge they like. And buy them two or three sets of them, or at least one set. And if they break one, they'll have an extra. I always like to carry two brand new sets with me when I was on the road. And that way, I always had a fresh set to put on the guitar if I needed to, and I always needed to. And I always had a, a set of new, another set of new ones if I broke a string. I'd have a brand new one to put right back on the one that broke. All right. A peg winder. One of these to crank your keys with. Now, it was talked about this a while back. Somebody said in the comments, every peg winder has a bridge pin puller on it. Well, no, they don't. This one doesn't have any. I've got another one here somewhere that doesn't. So, you might want to make look at it or ask the store if it's got a bridge, a bridge pin puller on the peg winder that you're purchasing for your friend. Or if you're even getting it for yourself, everybody needs a peg winder. Wire cutters. When you put new strings on, you got all this ungodly bird's nest jungle up here along your peg head <laughs> or headstock. <laughs> God, that's a funny word, man. 
I'll try not to use it anymore, I promise. I know you guys don't like that word. Uh, yeah, when you put on new strings, and you've got all that excessive string sticking out there, you need a good set of wire cutters to clip those off. Now, I use wire cutters, you all see me do a million times, to pull the bridge pins out. And they work perfect, man. I've been doing it for 40 years, and I've never broke one off. you got to be conscientious what you're doing, man. And, uh, you know, not clip the head off of the bridge pin. Don't put any pressure there. i got videos about it. Search the channel. You'll find it. Now, you can also get... Here's another thing. Oh, man, I had it laid out here, and I can't find it now. Isn't that how it always goes? Holy shit. It's always Anyways, like it's a pin puller. They make just a pin puller made... To pull these bridge pins out now granted it won't fit all guitars one uh, pin puller tool will not fit every guitar i was going to use one on this guitar and i had it laid out here and i can't find it man wow i can't believe that but it wouldn't fit this guitar and i couldn't use it I here it is i hear it is for those that don't know what they look like that's what they look like this one would not fit this guitar is that Gibson Hummingbird. All right, every guitar player should have linseed oil. About once a year, when you got all your strings off, clean your board good and put a coat of linseed oil all the way up and down the fretboard. Uh, there's been a lot of argument about that, but believe me, I've done it, man, all of my life. Never had any trouble with it. I've had trouble seeing a lot of trouble with the people that don't use oil on a fretboard. So. You know, if your boyfriend or girlfriend plays a guitar, get her a bottle of linseed oil to do that, you know, once a year or so. Doesn't matter if it's boiled or unboiled, people will argue that. I've used them both in the past 40 years. Got the same result. Lubricating oil. Oral. <laughs> Lubricating oil. Every now and then, you should put a drop of oil on your, your tuning machines. Some of them's even got an oil hole in them. A lot of the old Gibson style had an oil hole right in the back of the tuning machine. Put a little bit around the pegs. Uh, sometimes if you're working on your truss rod, drop a few drops down in there on that adjusting head. Just a little container is all you need. You know, it'll last you forever, man. All right. Temperature, humidity gauge. I can't even read my own writing, man. Temperature and humidity gauge. That's one of these. Every guitar player should have one. I keep two right here where I work at. That's the other one. And they stay pretty close to the same. Not exactly, but right now it's saying uh, temperature in here 64. I hear the heat running right now. It's not running in here, but oh yeah it is. I turned the heat on in here. It's turned down low though. And uh, humidity 62. 64 temperature, 62 humidity on that one in this room. And on this one, humidity is 63 and 64 on that one. Did not say, no, 62. 63 on here, that one says 64 degrees. This one says 64.9. So they're pretty close. Uh, they're cheap, man. Get one, put it in your case, or get one for your spouse or whatever, and tell them, you know, keep it in their case, or keep it in the room where they keep their guitars. Uh, cases, guitar cases, that's a must. Whether it's a... A gig bag is better than nothing at all. You know what I mean? I recommend a hard shell case. They cost a little bit more money, but well, they're coming. They're not that much really these days. Not like the way they used to be. They used to be really expensive, and you can still get them that are very expensive. But you know, just a cheap, good hard shell case is fine as long as it's padded good inside. You know, got plenty of fuzz in it and all that jazz. But like I say, if you can't afford that and you have no case at all, a gig bag is way better than having nothing, you know, nothing at all to put your guitar in. And that should make about 20, about 20 things that you ought to buy your spouse, or one or two or a few of them, if not all, for Christmas this year. Uh, like I say, you don't have to have all this stuff. I do have, I've got, I keep it all, because I, I need it, you know, working on guitars, you got to have it. And, uh, but, you know, as an average guitar player, maybe only a few of these things. Maybe some of them you've already got. But uh, there are some ideas. I've been writing these down for weeks, man, trying to think about things that I could put on here for this video. And I'm sure you're always going to remind me of things that I left off. Somebody always does. And I'm sure it'll happen this time. But there's your 
at least 20 things that uh, you can think about getting, you know, whether you buy them for yourself or, like I said, for your spouse or for a friend or whatever, family member. Anybody that plays guitar should have some of this stuff or all of it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Merry Christmas to you. If I don't talk to you again, uh, I don't know how many more videos I'll get in between now and Christmas or how many you'll see between now and Christmas. So let me say Merry Christmas to all of you watching this video. And thank you for your support here. The subscriber count has been going through the sky, man. Thank you guys for that, all you new ones. Thank you old ones for keeping it here. I know some of you have been here from, good Lord, way back when I made collaboration videos. And yeah, there's a shit ton of them if you want to go back and watch them. They're pretty good. They're not too good. Yeah, they're probably all right. But I probably could have done better. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas to you. Happy Holidays. I hope you guys have a great one. And thanks to the patrons, too. Don't want to leave them out. Hey, we're going to get another guitar contest going here. I'm not sure what guitars it's going to be. We're going to get another guitar uh, contest going here real soon. And uh, if you want to get in on it, come over to Patreon and uh, check it out, man. The guy received his uh, Epiphone the other day, and he took it out of the case and tuned it up. Wow, he could not believe he said it sounded so good, and he was so happy. That was what you know, thrilled me. Happy, 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 he put and he won the guitar here, and you can win one too. So uh, come on over and join us if you're into that kind of thing you like. <laughs> See you on the next video. Cheers to you. Mm -hmm.